The key, of course, to buying a Pentium PC is getting improved performance. But how much better is a Pentium than a good 486? Here to show us is Ron Olfers of Compaq. Hi, Stuart. Ron, first of all, what are the two machines we have here? What we're showing, Stuart, is a Compaq Desk Pro family. On the right is a Compaq Desk Pro 486-33. On the left, the Desk Pro 566M, the Pentium product from Compaq. On the right also, just for clarification, is a 17-inch 1024 monitor and the QVision 200, the new monitor on the left. Okay, so that's a 486-33. This is a Pentium 66. Right. All right, now let's take a look at this board now. I understand because this is a modular design, if I wanted to, I can upgrade this by putting in a board that has the Pentium processor on it, which would be a board like this? That's exactly correct. All right, and what's on here? What we're looking at is the processor board for the Desk Pro M. On the right, you'll see the Pentium processor along with its fan complex. The Pentium processor sits just under the fan. Mm -hmm. Moving to the left, you see the 256K of second level cache. That's this guy in the middle here. In the middle, and we can take this off because it can be installed easily by the user. Okay. Moving further to the left, you see the 8 megabyte of standard memory or which 16 megabyte, here, yeah. which is on the back side. Okay. Notice also the SIM sockets are there. Mm -hmm. You can carry up to 144 megabytes of memory right on the system board. Okay. Can we look, look at the back of the board, see the rest of the memory, and also explain what you have as you call it, you call it TriFlex architecture. Right. What does Tri that mean? TriFlex architecture actually started as flex architecture in the 386. We actually separate the memory from the processor bus in order to get higher performance. And is that the three chips you have here? That's the three chips uh -huh. here plus the four address buffers. Mm -hmm. And what we've done with that is designing our own chipset for the Pentium, we make use of all the performance and features that are in there. The biggest one is to make sure, as Stephen said, to keep the Pentium processor full. Yeah. And we do a 128-bit mm -hmm. path of memory along with things like looking at algorithms to understand what the next instruction cycle may be. Let me ask you about the heat question again, and you showed me the fan sitting in front of the Pentium, and you've got these sort of cooling devices here. What, what are you doing with these things? What we have are the 560 Pentium and the 566. On the 560, we can cool it very adequately by using a passive heat sink. So the 60 megahertz chip takes that data cool a passive off. heat sink. What we've done when we designed the Desk Pro M back in 1990 and early 91, we knew that it would have a Pentium in it. We designed it for that. So we had the airflow actually coming around mm -hmm. the outside of the, the computer and to make sure that it cools it. When the 66 megahertz, we actually go ahead and put the extra fan just for that extra margin of safety. Yeah. All right, can we go run our little benchmark test here and maybe get this guy out of the way? And what are we going to run? What's the test going to be? What we're going to run, we're not going to show Windows NT. We actually have Windows 3.1 on both machines because we want to make sure that you can understand and get a basis for where you might be today and where you can go just by upgrading so, a processor. So board. even in the Windows 3.1 environment, we're still going to see the benefits of using a Pentium. Sure. I think you'll see if you Okay, so ready, are, are ready to run uh, PowerPoint? PowerPoint ready, demo. set, go. What we're showing is a PowerPoint demo. It's a demo that I'm sure a lot of uh, your viewers have seen. And you'll see on the left side that with this Pentium processor board, it just runs a lot faster. How much is a lot faster? Actually, almost three times as fast when you compare it to 486.33. It's important also to note that with uh, Windows 3.1 or with PowerPoint, where the way we're showing it, it's not uh, Pentium aware code. This is straight uh, MS DOS type so code. So the software doesn't know it's not ready for the Pentium, but That's it's exactly taking right. advantage of the way you're quickly moving data, nevertheless. Compatibility is real key. In and obviously the Pentium's already done. And he's already done, and we're going to wait for just a minute. And our 4633 is still cranking along. Still I remember running. the days when we were doing the 46 <laughs> versus the 386, and the 486 was done, and we're we waiting. The same sort and of it goes thing. on and on and on. And we made really a, a, a huge leap forward in performance yeah. to be able to go the upgradability to that. You guys are out there actually selling these Pentium machines now, and I take it the users are the guys who are really into graphics, into computation-intensive kind of applications. That's true. If you are using graphics as part of your job and as part of what you're doing, clearly you'll want to have the most performance if you're doing a mission-critical mm -hmm. application or your results are very timely for the corporation. Can we take a look at a CAD demonstration, which I assume CAD is a classic area in which you really need that speed. And if we just type CAD, and again, this will hit the enter key. Okay, oh, ready, get set, go. Go. And what we have here is AutoCAD Release 12 for DOS. And AutoCAD Release 12 for DOS is, again, not Pentium aware. We're running just straight code to make sure that you can understand where you would be with a 4633 mm -hmm. and where you could go just with this new processor board. So taking a look at uh, this CAD program here, obviously we're whizzing away here on the... It's a pretty complex drawing. We're regenerating the, the drawing. We're do working with the hidden lines and shading at things that are very compute intensive to really isolate the processor to make to let you see just what the differences mm -hmm. are in the processor itself.
And in this CAD environment, we still about 3x performance here between the We're two? We're again uh, uh -huh. right at three times the performance yeah. of a 4633. And, well, this guy's done, obviously, and he's done a lot and we're faster than the 46. All right, final question. Again, about this upgrade question. How much would it cost me to use this board and upgrade my 4633 to get to Pentium 66 versus just buying a new machine? To go to the new Pentium processor board would be under $2,000. Uh -huh. You would have everything that you would need then to go to the full Pentium power. And how much would it cost me to buy the 566? Current price on the 566 is a 49.99. Okay, so it's a big savings. A big savings. Yeah. Ron, thank you very much.